I've been looking forward to filming today's video for quite a while, ever since I knew it was coming. Uh, there's a little bit of mischief coming, but I'm going to be looking at alchemy. I'll tell you all about it in a second, but I'm also going to answer the questions. Do I think it's worth the money? Would I restock it? And have I got anything behind the bar already that's comparable? Let's dive in. Now let's deal with all the geeks first before all those people come at me and get the keyboard warriors coming me. Rob and his brother do not claim that this is a rum. This isn't a rum. I just want to put this video out there because I love change. I love innovation. And for me, this is a massive untapped resource. It's a conversation that I've had a few times now over the last sort of six to eight months with a couple of different people. But to my knowledge, Rob and his brother from Alchemy, let's give you a close up, are the first ones to market with UK field to bottle sugar beet molasses spirit drink. Now, let's go over the facts here for a second. Is it a rum? No. The sheer legal definition of rum is a spirit derived from sugar cane. This is not derived from sugar cane, even though it's molasses, it's derived from sugar beet. It therefore can legally never be classed as a rum. There are other countries, there are other brands around the world doing sugar beet rums. We won't get into that. But as I say, Rob and his brother do not claim that this is a rum. They don't want to be a rum. They want to be forward for innovation. And a one of the conversations I've had with a couple of other people as well is they want to some there is this thing that people certain people in the UK or British Isles want to maybe look at getting a, a GI for British rum being from sugar beet. Again, it's not actually it's something I don't really agree with, even though I do like the whole innovation thing. It's purely because I don't think you should ever call this rum. Be proud of actually what it is. Sugar beet molasses. Now, why sh sugar beet? And let, let's get into this whole story first, because if you are if you know my region where I live, Cambridgeshire, East Anglia, and we sort of do get slightly into the Midlands, slightly, we are surrounded by sugar beet fields and sugar beet factories. We are, you know, the bulk of the sugar produced in the British Isles comes from not too far away from me. I've got I've got two very, very close to where I am. Tate and Lyle factories of British sugar, whatever you want to call them, Tate and Lyle. So we do produce a hell of a lot of sugar beet molasses because it is the byproduct of creating your bags of Tate and Lyle sugar that you'll find in your supermarket. So we've got a lot of molasses. Now, the various conversations I've had uh, recently with people is they haven't, the reason why there isn't too much sugar beet molasses, I was going to say rum there, I'm going to, if, if it slips out, I'm sorry, it probably will, sugar beet, rum, I'm, I'm just going to call that, I don't, you know what I mean, if it slips out, I'm sorry, but you know, there isn't that too much of these sugar beet spirit drinks out there, simply because people haven't perfected the art yet, it isn't, from what I've learned from actually a couple of very skilled distillers and actually the few sort of British arts people and um, that I've spoken to that it is a very distilling sugar beet molasses is actually a very different beast to distilling um sugar cane molasses and that's all and again I, I without getting geeky I can't even go geeky but it's all to do with the um the compounds inside like the sugar the the levels of sugar the compounds inside sugar cane versus sugar beet there is completely different product all right you can't get juice for instance out of sugar beet but you can quite easily crush a sugar cane and get juice so you know the molecular structure the the DNA of a sugar cane is very different to sugar beet so people haven't perfected the art yet hence we haven't done it. However, Rob and his brother from Alchemy have been playing about and experimenting. They've got new, I'm not going to share it, they don't want me to, they're happy to talk about it in person, but they don't really want to go over the airwaves until they've made a, like, an impact with this because, you know, when, when people find out how they've done it, it's potential, you know, they're only small. Someone could swoop in and find, do, use their technology and create, just go bigger and better than what they am. And I'd love it to be Robin. I've got beard envy. He's got a great beard, Rob, uh, when we met him. So 
they use newfangled techniques. I'm not going to mention what they are. I've never heard of these techniques before in any of the rum distilling, let alone any uh, distilling spirit. I've never heard of uh, what they've done before. And I was fascinated. I couldn't even believe what he was telling me there. And I'm really, really fascinated. But, but tasting there and then, uh, I was like, wow, I really, really like that. And that's, that's it at the end of the day. Should we be comparing this to rum? No. Should we just be drinking it, tasting it, and thinking, do we like it? That is the end, be all and end all. Do we like it? As a sugar beet molasses spirit drink, do we like it? My first impression was, yes, I flipping well do. Now, I can't give you too many facts about the rum because there aren't too many facts to have. But just be known that he is, uh, Robin his brother, they are playing about with different, you know, the ferments. You can play about with lots of different ferments and different kind of fermenting periods like three days, four days, two weeks. You can play about with all that. You can play about with different distilling techniques. Uh, the one thing I think I can share, um, it's kind of like, it's sort of uh, like a, I'm just going to call it a hybrid still. Uh, we'll go We'll go with that. It's, it's kind of not, but it is, but I'm, I'll go with that. So we'll kind of go with that. But different distilling techniques, different aging techniques. This is actually an aged rum, all right? So that's where the secret comes in. This is actually an aged rum. But different techniques they use, different yeast strains, different ferments, uh, all that sort of stuff they use to create this. And they will be going down a route where they produce like limited edition one-offs different yeast strain rums, different age variants, different kind of distilling techniques, all that sort of stuff. It's an exciting time for the guys at Alchemy. Uh, I can't wait to see what comes next. So having already had like a brief tasting, I kind of knew what how to position this. So there will be a few drinks, mixed drinks coming after the tasting, kind of so you've got an idea of where you can position this. Um, I, I'm gonna have a taste, I'll talk you through it in a minute, but the only other fact bombs I could give you, it's 40%, I'm sure it's 40%, I didn't really look at that. Uh, he says, uh, 80, oh no, 40, 42% ABV, sorry, 42% ABV uh, and 38 pounds 50. But here's the thing that I wanna emphasize, distilled in uh, Bury St. Edmunds, the sugar beet factory is Bury St. Edmunds. If you wanna do your bit for the environment, you know, there's certain distilleries in the UK that are still, you know, they're, they're going green, and but they're still importing loads of molasses from the Caribbean and America and Australia and all Africa and all those around the world. You know, this literally travels 20 miles, if that, and that's if the sugar beet comes from near me. You know, there's a lot of sugar beet out near Bury St. Edmunds and Newmarket and all in the fields there, there's a lot of sugar beet there. You know, you could be talking like two miles from field to factory to distillery bottled out into the shops. That's that's not great, that's brilliant food miles. Now, as I say, I know there's a lot of geeks and a lot of rum connoisseurs and all that sort of turning, you know, they are getting proper stroppy keyboards watching this, but as I say, I love innovation. Do I want this to be the next thing for British rum? No. Do I want this to be the spearhead of a new category, sugar, beet, molasses, spirit drinks, whatever we can affectionately call it? Yeah, why the hell not? We've got an abundance of sugar, beet, molasses around here. Why not flipping well distill spirits from it? Now on the nose, I was I was totally gonna say something else there, but I stopped, I stopped myself mid-flow. <laughs> on the nose, very, very simple. Vanilla, would you be fooled in thinking it's rum? Yeah, uh, of course you would. You know, it's molasses. Um, so vanilla, oaky notes off there, maybe a touch of fruit, but the sort of the big note that I get is more caramel. It's not very complex um, because it's at the end of the day, it's a young spirit, but it smells, it smells, how I want to, how I interpret it, it smells like I want to drink it, like I just flipping well want to dive in and drink it. Now, you can see by the colour of this, if we put it, put it up against, I can't see myself in the mirror. If I can put it up against my white shirt, um, you can kind of sort of see the colour of that. I would treat it as a darker rum. It has got that profile of a darker rum. Um, it's certainly not got the profile of a lighter, an eight-year-old or a 10-year-old or, or even like a three-year-old. It's not got that profile. It has got a dark rum profile. So you can already imagine the kind of drinks that I'm going to rock out with this. I would recommend you to try with this. But let's just give you the tasting notes. It is, it's got a lovely, again, I don't want you to mistake this for actually what, what it is, but 
that made no sense. But it's got this lovely sweetness to it without it being sweet. I try not to use the word too much, but it is silky smooth. It is not rough around the edges. It is not kind of ethanol-y, alcohol-y, kind of, you know, those bitter things. The only bitter thing it's got about it is it's got that sort of inherent dark rum, charred barrel kind of vibe to the finish. And I'm led to believe, sorry, I've forgotten this, and I should have tapped Rob up for some notes, but I'm too eager to film, film this stuff. Um, I'm led to believe the colour has come from uh, charred uh, barrels, okay? But it's the techniques they use during the ageing where that's kind of accelerated and, and does all its wonderful, magical stuff. There's a whole new breed of scientific distillers and blenders coming to the fore, and that's what I flipping love. You know, if you're a traditionalist, fine. You know, you stay in your comfort zone. You you kind of, have, they've got nothing wrong with rums from, that have been around the block for like 10, 20, 30 years. Hell, I love some of those. I just love innovation. And I love to see new things going on, especially really local to me, you know, like 20 minutes from where I live. This is phenomenal. So the taste on this, kind of like bitter, bitter caramel. Lovely kind of robust vanilla kind of spikes that up. I do get a little bit of fruit off there, like juicy sort of sultanas, juicy raisins. It's a little bit of sort of mixed fruit vibe, very, not, not even close to being Christmas cake vibe, but it's sort of similar to that. And there is a little bit of barrel influence coming out of that as well. That little sort of spiky, sort of spicy, you know, oak aging kind of thing going on. Uh, again, I'm not going to share how old it is. I'm going to leave that to... I'm, I'm going to let them do their stuff, let them get out there, and then perhaps we can do, like in a year from now, 18 months from now, we can perhaps do, like get to the nuts and bolts about how to do it, because it's flipping fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Um, £38.50, you know, as I say, it's a UK two-man <laughs> operation team. I'm not sure whether the wives are involved. If the wives are involved and the family is involved, it might be four or five, sorry. But at the moment, it's he, Rob said him and his brother, so I'm going for a two-man team. You know, bottle prices, labelling prices, marketing prices, all that sort of stuff. You have to forgive UK brands for being slightly more expensive. Do I think, if I compared this to a Caribbean rum for 40 quid, do I think it's in that same bracket? No. Would I put this at a 25, 30 pound bracket, like for like? Probably, yeah. I think it's definitely got the quality uh, for a sort of a, you know, an up to a 30 pound Caribbean rum. It definitely has. But as I say, you know, UK, you have to forgive them. They just haven't got the volume. They haven't got the spending budget. It's economies of scale. They just haven't. So yes, we know they're expensive. You don't have to bang on about them being expensive. Just embrace what they're about. Flipping, this is delicious. So now I've had a bit of a rant and a bit of a rave about sugar beet um, and the, the sugar beet molasses. I was going to say rum. I want to call it rum. and I know I can't, but sugar beet molasses spirit drinks. Um, let's get on to the taste and see how this fares. Now, I do think this performs as a dark rum. Okay, I do think it's in that wheelhouse. It's not like a... Uh, a three, five-year-old aged Barbados rum, or it's not got those tropical vibes. The first time I had it, it was like, and you know me, I do love my dark rums as well, especially stuff that I can sip neat. So I think that's it. So hence, I think this is Stratford Soda's wheelhouse. Uh, there's a cocktail there, which I'll explain what that is in a second. And I just had to take another gas break because of the Pepsi that's there. But let's get on to it. Now, again, I'm not a huge one. I was just starting this. Literally, I never do this, but I've just started to do this for the videos and the new direction I'm trying to take. Put in an ice cube with the rum. Again, it's the second video in this session and it just destroys it for me. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like ice with rum. That neat rum is hands down better than sticking an ice cube in there. It just Maybe it's the temperature. May, I don't know. It just turns it into this bittery kind of not enjoyable experience. It's, it's just not great. It loses that smoothness. It gives it some harshness when you've got ice in it. Anyway, uh, the rum fashion again, 25 mil, tiny, tiny drizzle of sugar, like half a bar spoon, two, three mil, and some uh, Miss Betty's bitters. We don't, it's a good job. That was plastic bowl. Miss Betty's bitters, uh, aromatic bitters in there okay this is delicious do i really think it's the rum is prominent you can tell it's 
dark rum. You can tell it's that sort of base. Would I instantly pick, and I think this is going to be apparent for all kind of rums when you do them as a rum fashioned. You know, you lose the nuances of the rum, you just create a, a, a lovely three ingredient drink. Again, that was on a menu. If that got served to me, if someone bought that or I ordered that, I would quite happily finish that. That's flipping delicious. Um, picking that up, we move on to the old Pepsi, Diet Pepsi Cola. Flipping, outstanding. Absolutely love that. I'm going to have to revisit. This is going to be a bold statement. But one of my favourite rum and Pepsis that I've had in a long, long while. This, this, you know I love, I say it again, you know I love my dark rums. Yes, this is sugar beet, not rum. I know, I know. But this is really, really good. It's something with that caramel. It's not caramel, it's sort of toffee kind of vibe. A bit of toffee that just kind of, just plays so well with cola. It just works so well. I don't think I've mentioned the sweetness scale of that. It's really not sweet. It's got a little bit to it, like six to eight out of 20. You know, in the spiced rums, you, you know, the your generic spiced rums are up at 16, 17, 18. Plantation XO, I should say, is like 10 to 12. You know, it's got a little bit to it, but not too much because of the finish. It has got that bitter kind of toffee caramel finish to it. This, this is, Oh, this is phenomenal. I love this. And then before I get onto the Stratford sodas, the one cocktail I did want to taste, and I've had a couple of gulps from this already, uh, the Hurricane. Passion fruit, it's generically a dark rum cocktail. So passion fruit, a bit of lemon juice in there. This is really, really good. This it plays in the arena of dark rum very, very, very well. Oh, I could guzzle that. That's so good. Right. Stratford Soda's restocked in the first session where we are lovely restocked there. there I'll flash the link up on screen where you can get these if you're in the UK um, you get them at a discount 50% off your very first order of Taster Packs Party Packs. Finally, I, I keep saying, you know, th this is run and joke that Hedgerow is not my favourite out of the three, out of the four. Uh, there is this sort of run and joke that every week it's like, oh, that's really good. Finally, the hedgerow is, for me personally, is the weak link out of the four. Normally, the hedgerow performs really, really well, despite me not liking it too much, or not my favourite, I should say. It's it's there. Me, the big surprise first up was the citrus. I was like, wow, that's really good, which makes me now want to try that as a daiquiri. Um, the tropical, again, really, really good pineapple and coconut again. The thing with Stratford soda is they haven't got the, the sweetness and they haven't got the gas. They're just full of flavor. It really, really works. The hedgerow is that blackberry and rose uh, behind it, which you could argue you, you should think might work, but I, I don't know. It's just not my favorite here. I mean, many, many people will absolutely love that. It's just for me, I, I dare, the, the, you know, the one, the, the whole thing that I did want to do though was the dark and stormy. I could have gone down the ginger beer route. I think, I think this has got a bit more body to it to, for ginger ale. I personally wouldn't mix this with ginger ale, but the spice, and I know this isn't ginger, this is cinnamon forward with a hint of ginger behind it. There's nothing else in there. Because this has got the sort of citrus at the base, this has got that sort of limey kick to it. The only thing I'm going to do now, now I've had a little taste, is um this is phenomenal this is really good i'm just going to add a bit of bitters to make this a dark and stormy oh wow that's so good that is so damn good oh my god i don't know i don't know which is my favorite now i don't know th th i'm gonna have so much fun drinking that so then let's get into the nuts and bolts of this let's sum up the video do i think it's worth the money would i restock it and have i got anything behind the bar already that's comparable so Let's go the last question first. Have I got anything behind the bar that's comparable? As you can see, yes, I do love my dark rums. Now, as I say, I, look, I know this is sugar beet molasses. I know it's not rum. But if it, what, what's the saying? If it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, you know, it's that kind of thing. Now, this has got a very distinctive profile to it for me, where it does directly sort of match up to a, a few rums here. The obvious one, or the, sorry, the, the one you might not think is actually the woods. Now, ABV aside, 
and you could argue that it's the ABV of that that does kind of... I'm, I'm forgetting pusses here as well, ain't I? Where's my, where's my flipping pusses? Gunpowder proof. There we go. I'm forgetting pusses. ABV aside, the finish on that really does remind me of that. That sort of bitter, caramelly, toffee kind of dark rum vibe. That's kind of where I get there. The ABV is very different, but generically, it's a very similar. So you know do i prefer it i i can i can handle that neat i can't handle that neat so that over that i would go all day um the goslings i'll be honest i pre i prefer that and but people know my kind of opinions on goslings anyway the myers again is a dark run i prefer that but again people know my opinion of that so those three there um Barcello, I don't really like Barcello. It's got very different characteristics to that. Uh, again, you could argue probably a 10 tenner, 10 pounds. What's that? 12, 13 dollars cheaper. Um, I think the, I, I think this plays better in dark rum cocktails than what that does from what I've tasted. That's really, really good. So I put it over the Barcello. Now we get really, really tough. Actually, we don't get really tough. We can get rid of Plantation OD. I love my Plantation. I'm a Plantation fanboy. I don't really, that's a lovely rum. I don't really sit that in the dark rum category, even though it is dark rum by sheer, you know, name of the rum. Uh, so again, that actually, you know, I prefer to have that in dark rum cocktails over that. That doesn't work for me in, you know, in the hurricanes, in those, in um, like the painkillers, those sort of cocktails. It's nice. It's great rum. It just doesn't work for me. Now we come on to the, the nuts and bolts. <laughs> We've got four absolute bangers here that oh, I would be loath to sort of replace. I flipping love that. And that's got a very similar finish to it because they're not sweet you know it, they're very, they're easy drinking neat i flipping love that the pusses gunpowder proof has got a little bit of a sweeter finish but then it's stronger as well and um, the finish actually for me is very reminiscent because of the charred barrel effect on that uh, and how they've accomplished the charred barrel is very reminiscent on the finish again stronger much stronger rum but the finish and hence why i know that plays well in dark rum cocktails again is up there and then you've got the oftd the daddy the absolute daddy out of those three the only one that i would go for or sorry out of those four the only one that i would go for to grab neat and i love my neat rum is that one so that to that I would quite happily have that, but I don't want to lose that. I just love, I, because I love dark rum, I would kind of have both. But I could not replace any of those. Uh, basically what I'm driving at, I think this an addition. I don't think it replaces, I think it's an addition. I think it gives you a slightly different vibe, slightly different, you know, if you're a rum and coke fan, if you're a rum and ginger beer fan and you don't want to go the high ABV stuff, I think this really does sit well there. And that may have answered the other two questions as well. Do I think it's worth the money and would I restock it? £38.50, I, as I've said at the top of the video, I, you have, you know, I'm totally, I'm a small business myself. I get, I get costs, I get margins. I absolutely get it. In real terms, you know, yes, it's a little bit expensive, but in, in small business terms, it's bang on the money. You know, you could be charging 42, 44, you know, pounds. I think £38.50 is a great, great price point. Yes, I would happily pay that for that. I know some of you won't, that's fine. You do you. I would quite happily pay that for that. Would I restock it? 100% yes.